the original member of the WAVE organization, athletic trainer, Larry Sales. Tonight's Syndix captain of the game is Tommy Rouse. Wait, fans, let me hear you for your six-time champion, Milwaukee WAVE. Time for today's Freighter and Medical College of Wisconsin Scratch Report. Not playing in tonight's game. Nick Vorberth, Bryce Boyd, J.C. Banks, Andy Hackbarth, and Marcelo Fontana. Pre-game Scratch Report brought to you by Freighter and the Medical College of Wisconsin, where the finest minds in medicine have their minds on you. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand to honor America as Jennifer Schaefer performs our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars to the perilous fight. O'er oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's bright glare, the bones bursting, Jennifer Schaefer and our national anthem. Nice job, Jen, thank you. Tonight's flower giveaway brought to you by our friends at Welke's House of Roses. All righty, kicking out the first ball for tonight's contest. Will Froling, Martin Soto, Luis Zamora, Carlos Pena, Cassie Smetzmer, David Shashow, and the vetters, Reagan, Ryan, and Riley. All right, when you're ready, one, two, three, kick. Bringing out the official Sendix game ball for today's game. Mr. Tommy Rouse. Thanks, Tommy. Right over there. How about a nice round of applause for Mr. Tommy Rouse? Over that way, Tommy.
All right, so the stage is set here between the Missouri Comets and the Milwaukee Wave. Game two and three, if necessary, which would be a mini game if the Milwaukee Wave can somehow come up with a victory over the Missouri Comets. Tom went along with Wave Hall of Famer Art Kramer, and I guess, Art, you just let caution go to the wind if you're the Wave right now because if you don't get a victory here, the season comes to an end. Defensively, you have to, Tom. The last two times, the last time these two teams played here in this building, I said it was going to be a low-scoring game. Both teams were going to drop back. Not tonight. This is going to be up-tempo. The, both teams are going to be pressuring the goalie. You're going to see a high-flying affair today at the Cellular Arena. You take a look at the teams. The Milwaukee Wave dressed in black. And the Missouri Comets going left to right. Ball headed away by Victor Kudos. He starts in the back with Jonathan Greenfield. Jonathan was at midfield for the game yesterday. He can play either position equally uh, adeptly. So he'll start on the back line tonight. Everton and Ian Bennett running up front along with Tenzin Rampa. Tenzin inserted in the lineup tonight. Art, he did not play yesterday. He has had some success against the Comets and in the postseason. Coach Tozer wanted a little more toughness from his target players, and that's why Tenzin Rampa is in the game tonight for the Wave. Boy, Greenfield working himself into problems right away. Wave trying to clear top of the area, and Leo Gibson going to be called. Was that Gibson? Yeah, that was Leo. Called for a handball and knocked that one down. Gibson, the league's leading scorer during the regular season, he erupted yesterday, five goals and an assist, and if you if you're a way fan, Art, hopefully you're thinking he got him out of his system yesterday. Well, one way to establish the targets is to get the ball into him early, just like that, and let those targets work. Try to be physical and back the Missouri defenders up. Greenfield plays it over to Ian Bennett, the number three score in the league during the regular season. Good defense there on the takeaway as uh, Gibson gets pounded down. The foul is called. Just underway here from the U.S. Cellular Arena. Once again, today's game is brought to you by Legends of the Field. Wave and the Comets meeting for the 10th time all-time in the postseason. The Wave leading the all-time series five games to four with a three and two record here at the U.S. Cellular Arena. That includes a couple of mini games. The Wave winning in 10-11, and the Comets coming back to win last year's minigame, which determined the series. So that was the first time the Comets had defeated the Wave in the playoffs. Wave had won the first two years, and then uh, Comets went on to lose to the Baltimore Blasts in last year's championship. Let's, be, let's take a look one more time of this foul call on Everton. He and Johnny Sosa battling there. Two early fouls on the way forwards. The first one on Rampa, that one on Everton. It's going to be important for the Wave that they press Missouri intelligently, not let them off the hook by committing silly fouls in the attacking half of the field. Waltman, the keeper, brings it up, plays it to the corner. Stefan San Louis trying to get it. San Louis had a big goal yesterday's game. It was 4 0 Missouri, and the Wave looked like it had carried the play for a while in that second period, but then that goal by San Luis Art really seemed to uh, quench the moment, any momentum the way that established at that point. I see an, another foul by, this time, Pereira in the attacking zone. The third foul, and then watch after the play as Pereira gives Sosa a little shove there. Got to be careful. Don't want to pick up any silly penalties. Right. You saw Rich here. Grady behind yep. the play telling him that's enough. Rich Grady, Ryan Sigich, the latter, the chief of officials in the Major Indoor Soccer League working tonight's game. I'll tell you what, we got a pretty nice crowd here for a Monday night gathered here. It was so nice today. Art uh, thought we might have the retractable dome here at the cell come out tonight. San Luis bouncing shot wide left. Yeah, this is more like Kansas City weather that we had here today. Well, the wave needs to change a few things up and a good start with the change in the weather here in Milwaukee. Acid Poor, the assistant coach, player assistant coach, trying to get around there. Eventually deflected out of bounds by the Comets. Wave will take it. Milwaukee in game twos at home, and we're looking for good omens, certainly from the Wave side. 
14 and 3 when playing game two at home in their playoff career. Milwaukee is 50 and 39 all time in postseason activity. And 35 and 16 at home. Now 15 and 23 on the road. And 24 and 12 in game ones. After the setback to the comments yesterday. Comments break the press. Here they come. Acid poor, the veteran out of the University of Detroit Mercy. They tried to work it across. Comments were looking for a handball there, no call. Flicked out of the zone that time by Tony Walls. Wade starts it back as Munoz plays it to Phil Surprise. Phil, the rookie out of Quinnipiac U, tried to take a shot, follow up by Judson McKinney, he was blocked. And now the Comets start back the other way, pass far wing. Brian Harris, the defender coming forward that he couldn't control, and Feinster gets it. Speaking of Marcel, Art, uh, he was not feeling 100% physically going into the game yesterday. I guess he's been bothered by the flu. So hopefully feeling a little bit better back on the home turf here tonight. Greenfield lays it across far side. There's a shot that's wide by Everton. Rebound Greenfield. Johnny tracks it down, and now he's going to be forced back out. Good defense that time by Brian Perez to prevent Greenfield from a follow-up shot. Everton works at the corner. There's Tenzin Rampa. Tenzin, the veteran out of Madison, Wisconsin, who played his college ball at UW-Milwaukee. Waltman throwing long, trying to get for Gibson. Yeah, nice play there by Greenfield, although he's lucky he didn't get called for a dangerous play. The boot was up. You see Gibson is still down. Pereira double teamed to the corner. Nick, the third-year man out of UCAL Santa Barbara, and he's been called for a foul there. Looked like a little frustration from Pereira, and that's already two on him. And remember, in the MISL, you only get three personals in each half. On your fourth, you give up a two-minute power play. Watch the play here at the other end with Leo Gibson and Jonathan Greenfield. You see Jonathan get the boot up high. Gibson go down. And you see uh, Sosa get it pounding down. I'll tell you one thing, Johnny Sosa who was primarily a forward during the regular season, but he's been switched back to the back line for Coach Vladko Andonovsky lately, uh, mostly due to the injury to uh, the big defender, Cody Andrews. Uh, but uh, Sosa's done a nice job since being switched back there. And Thank they've you. also had Asipour playing out of the back as well at times. Here's Stefan San Luis. Trying to see if he can maneuver by Victor Kiddos. Bennett takes it away. No call. Ian Bennett starts back. Tried to flick it ahead to Greenfield, but Waltman reads that. He comes out and clears it up into the stands. Milwaukee should get a restart at the top of the arc. Well, once again, good pressure that time on Waltman. Creates the turnover and leads to the top of the arc restart. I already like the flow and tempo of this game much better for the wave. All right, 